thousand year old archaeological I don't know what do you want to call this I don't know what to say seriously this is just magnificent it smells beautiful it smells like like this amazing wood that's burning it is magical I don't know look at the sky <laughs> this is incredible I am so grateful for this opportunity to share this with you and I hope you're enjoying this because it's breathtaking. This got me. This really got me. Didn't expect this and it just, I think the combination of Romi today, the poetry, the air, having the privilege of coming to see a 5,000 year old village in history and touching it and smelling it. It's just mesmerizing. I don't know what to say. It really got to me. So, sorry. There's something really eerie about driving on a road in a car next to a village that is 5,000 years old. It just kind of puts things into perspective that I'm using my Bluetooth, I'm using Wi-Fi, and I'm looking at a mountain right here, prime real estate of 5,000 years ago. There's just something so haunting about that. I'm now inside the cave. There's no one here. This is incredible. Do not be afraid of climbing into the darkest caves of your soul, for it is in these empty caverns that silence finds shelter. You do not need to fill every hollow, empty room of your life, for in these chambers of nothingness is the opposite of loneliness. In the emptiness is where fulfillment begins. In these caves is where echoes of the past make peace with the desires of the future. These caves beckon you to explore the reflection of the world inside of you. The marrow of your bones have already carved pictures on the walls of your existence. As Jonah found his cave in the belly of the whale, and Moses in the cave of Mount Sinai, and humanity's last message in the cave of Hera, your answers await you in the caves of your own soul. No words, like I have no words to describe the feeling of being in a 5,000 year old property on a hill, on a mountain, in an ancient civilization. Like it's, it's exhilarating. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop talking right now because I just can't, like it, there's nothing that can do justice to this moment. Okay, here are some ruins, but these are definitely not 5,000 years old. They are definitely from the Seljuk period. I'm only gonna say this once. If you ever have a chance to come to Turkey, go to Konya, you have to come to Sile. Honestly, like I, I'll beg you, <laughs> please, please come, because it truly is amazing. And if you could walk in it at night, the air is incredible. There's something about the air, and I'm gonna do the research and I'll Put it in the notes or something but there's something about the air here that is spectacular and i think it has something to do with the circulation of the mountains and the canyon and the valley but right now i can't look it up i'm just letting you know please please come here
went back 800 years and then we went back 5,000 years. Today, we are going forward into the future. All right, so right here at the entrance, they're doing some renovation. But just take a look at this entrance and this will give you a feel for what we're gonna see today. So I've actually gone to the Las Vegas Consumer Electronics Show, the CES show, which is one of the largest technology shows in the world, where all the greatest, newest gadgets and technology in, is introduced to the world. It's usually held in January every year, and I have gone to that maybe five, six times in my life. And I've also been to the Canton Fair, which is one of the other largest international shows, and it's incredible. So now I'm going to compare basically this museum that is technology based and kind of see how techno they really are. Uh, hello everybody, I am Osman and uh, this is Science Center and the biggest science center in Turkey and uh, this is positioned in uh, Central Anatolia mm -hmm. and uh, it has uh, eight galleries uh, under the different themas from anatomy to astronomy and you can see the uh, two floors mm -hmm. and the position of the, some uh, galleries. Uh, this first one is uh, about the uh, science history, mm -hmm. uh, especially the Islamic one. Uh, you know the Islamic Golden Age. Uh, mm -hmm. there, uh, there were a lot of <coughs> Muslim inventors mm -hmm. and you can see the uh, some uh, replicas of uh, their inventions and this is the uh, anatomy version uh, it made by American. I love this one <laughs> yes uh, this one is made by American uh, uh, exhibition uh, films mm -hmm. and this is the anatomy version Workshop and laboratories for uh, children and uh, some uh, teenagers, mm -hmm. and we uh, prepare some uh, workshop about the uh, science education. Mm -hmm. And the second floor, you can see the, uh, the another exhibition, and we have some laboratories about finance. Uh, let me show you finance. Finance, yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I never think of finance and science together. Uh, because you know finance uh, uh, needs some mathematics and uh, uh, engineering and we can... Finance? Yes. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we are getting a behind the scenes tour of really the special things in this particular science museum. This is about uh, our finance laboratory and uh, there is some uh, computer and we, this is closed because of pandemic uh, situation sure. mm -hmm. and we have some uh, screen you know you see and uh, it is uh, integrated for uh, both Istanbul mm -hmm. uh, so the stock market for Istanbul for, yes, for Turkey okay I know this sounds strange but so many of us Americans we don't know that you actually have your own stock market mm -hmm. this is fascinating Yes, it's the uh, same situation in here, but uh, we can teach uh, a high level of mathematics in here uh, for the uh, university students or college students. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, your name? Osman. Osman. They really helped enlighten us on how the power of teaching education to finance to younger students is going to be the engine for economy and their growth because Turkey is the hot spot and we know that and so I congratulate you to Ber to Ber Club. <laughs> Hi Merva. Hi. You are so social media team. You are nice. working for science centers. Wonderful. Okay. You have an amazing museum here. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope you get so many people to get attracted to science. So this is under construction. It's the child's library. Oh my god, it's so cute! Wow, 
put some here and please uh, mm -hmm. touch them and uh, read the instructions. Mm -hmm. and English one. Okay, I know. Yavash, normal, and Hizla. <laughs> Okay, come on. Hizla, Hizla, Yalla, Yalla. <laughs> Selfie! Circuit board. If you want to make original templates, uh, you use this uh, machine. For example, uh, you want to make a toy, uh, you use this uh, machine. What is this? Uh, this is a, a small maker. Honeycomb. Honeycomb, yes, mm -hmm. yes, this honeycomb. Uh, and for example, uh, kids want to this uh, make this mm -hmm. uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, they use this machine. How? Uh, if you want to try this uh, first, push this up there. for you. Oh, Give. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Congratulations for a beautiful you place much. and thank doing such much. important work to inspire the children. So I've got two gifts. Okay, so I'm facing my ultimate fear because in high school, in high school I failed chemistry because I caused two major accidents in school at Cal High 1987 and I was very unpopular because of this. So this is the chemistry lab. Okay, this isn't so bad. Oh, those are what scare me. Korkunç <laughs> for me. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll tell you guys what I did in chemistry, but I caused two major accidents and it was not pretty. What the desks are, they look like little molecules. <laughs> like molecules and, oh my gosh, so cute. So these are the international. Earthquake lines. So, of course, this is the San Andreas Fault that goes all the way down. I did not know that it goes all the way down. Here's another one. Oh! All the way through. Now I am entering the 
anatomy part of the museum and if you know me you know I am obsessed with anatomy because um, I'm involved with you know the medical community from a dermatology standpoint my company Elage I wrote a book three years ago and it was published two years ago called topical steroid side effects and the focus of that book is basically the side effects of how topical steroids the creams that are used in dermatology and skin diseases how they affect the body I see the body parts as like personalities and characteristics and whatnot so when I study the body I think of them as actually like cartoon characters so I'm so excited anyway I just had to tell you that because um, when people read my book they were really appreciative of the fact that I broke down really complicated things into real simplified ways and that's because I'm a storyteller <laughs> I love the the human side of things and the personality and so that's kind of what I did in that book which you know it could get complicated you know especially with the endocrine system and the hormonal reactions from the steroids but um, yeah so I'm still working on my other book skin confessions that's what I'm supposed to be doing here in Turkey but look what I'm doing now I am so bad I am here with you <laughs> filming videos but I should be writing so I will get back to that but Right now, I'm like a little girl in Disneyland, and this is my Disneyland. Okay. The veins, the arteries. So these are the ones. Um, little known fact, seven months ago, exactly to almost the date, I developed pulmonary embolisms after having a surgery. So one week after I had surgery, I develop pulmonary embolisms and they're basically blood clots in the lungs and I almost died <laughs> so seven months ago I went through something pretty traumatic and um, had to get blood thinner in order to get the blood clots out of my lungs and um, it was quite the ordeal so I am truly grateful to be able to have a second chance at life and being here with you and uh, yeah Something I've noticed here in Turkey is that there's a major, major campaign against smoking. And I am going to do a video about that because I'm fascinated with how extreme their campaign is and wish that America would do the same and they're not. And it's crazy because they're complaining about healthcare costs when all they have to do is stop the public from smoking and it would solve so many problems. Are comparing bone density and they have bone slices so we are looking at the bones of a healthy 30 year old and moderately unhealthy 50 year old and a very severely unhealthy 70 year old bone starting from a fertilized egg that is six hours I'm gonna turn and help you see what I've walked every part of this museum and it is amazing so highly recommended especially for families and children because it's interactive hands-on all the way so I'm starving I'm so ready to go eat now mm -hmm. 